Welcome back, everybody. This is Excel Video 476. I'm Nate Moore. Just a quick reminder about MGMA's annual conference coming up in just a couple of weeks in Nashville. My session's Monday afternoon. We're going to talk about some of the applications of putting data into the Excel data model. All kinds of clever things you can do, and I look forward to seeing you there. What I want to talk about today is how to refresh and keep working with the data that we loaded last time to the Excel data model. And just for fun, I built another spreadsheet pivot table to show you a very common warning that you get when you connect Excel to an outside data source. By default, Excel gets all worked up and worried that, hey, data is coming from outside of Excel. It might be a virus, malware, whatever. So by default, it will block it. And what we really want is that data to get into Excel because remember last time some of that data came from SQL Server, like in a practice management system. And if we block the external content, our spreadsheet won't refresh and we'll never look at current data and there's all kinds of problems. One way to solve the problem is to do enable content, and that will enable the content for this spreadsheet. It's a short-term solution. The long-term solution, if you click on this hyperlink, you can say, all right, here is the button to enable the content. What you're looking for is the trust center. What the trust center can do, you can set up a trusted location, and a trusted location will say, hey, Excel, if you see anything coming from this location on my network, I'm going to allow the content to come through and I'm not going to bother you with that yellow bar every time. So you could set up a trusted location here. You can add a new location. You can trust it on your network if you got a network folder. As you set it up, you can also trust subfolders. So you can say, all right, here is my refreshing data or uh, practice management data or EHR data, whatever you want to call that folder. Anything inside that folder and anything inside those subfolders you can trust so you don't have to deal with this warning all the time. That's what I wanted to show you about enabling content. Let's go back here and talk about more ways from our upload to Power Pivot example last time to make sure your data refreshes. Once you've got that yellow bar out of the way, one of the things you want to do from the data tab is go to connections. What connections will show you is here's a list of all the connections to data sources that make up the data in your workbook. Linked table dates is the link to the data that's sitting inside my Excel worksheet. So I'm not terribly worked up about that one. If you look at it, you can look at the properties and you'll just see it when you refresh all connections, this will refresh. And this definition doesn't matter much because it's sitting in your spreadsheet already. Refresh data when opening files is a bigger deal. Typically, I'm not worried about data inside my spreadsheet I want to refresh so much. This is a link to my SQL Server data. If you look at the properties there, I want to be sure to refresh that data when I open the spreadsheet. Because what I want to do is I don't want to have to remember every time I open the spreadsheet to go out and refresh the data. Because I can open the spreadsheet, the phone can ring, the email comes in, I get distracted, and I don't realize I'm looking at old data. So I always refresh the data when I'm opening the file. It might take Excel another 30 seconds or a minute or two, depending on how much data you're refreshing. But you want to do this to make sure you're looking at current data. The other thing you might do, depending on how you're connecting to SQL Server, is save the password so you don't have to deal with the password every time. A couple of thoughts about refreshing data. The other thing you can do from this menu while we're here in data and connections, you can add a new connection here. And if you add a connection, one of the, you know what, let's just do it. We'll um, browse for more and ask it for a new source and let's do SQL Server and let's use this as my source of data because I have a server there. Windows authentication it works for me. You, if you had a SQL authentication password, you could enter it there. And here is all the different data sources that you can do. And so let's just say I want, well, you, let's come over here and let's say I want this new patient's data source and do next. What you can do is when you finish, now I've got another source of data in my data set. There's my new patient's one right here, and I can use that. Last trick to refreshing and getting data into your system. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll build a pivot table first. So again, I'm going to go to an external connection and let's see if we can, you know, what? rather than using an existing one, let me show you one more time. New source, Microsoft SQL Server. And connect. Let's go get... You can, uh, you can select multiple tables if you wanted to. Let's just grab this just for fun. And if we go here for next and finish, 
what you can do is now I've got a pivot table that I can build and if I had multiple tables I could even add it to the data model from here had I selected multiple tables. Bottom line, make sure you get rid of the yellow bar so your data will refresh. From the data tab and connections make sure that your outside connections especially here that these folks when you go to properties are set to refresh when opening file. See this one's not and it's not going to refresh unless I remember to and I don't want to remember to. Once you have data either from the data tab or from inserting a pivot table and getting multiple tables and getting that into your data model you've got data it's going to refresh. Now what we'll do in the next Excel video is go to the power pivot tab and we'll start to play with that data and tweak it a bit. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching. Thank you.